Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back, whichever. Glad to have you regardless. Today is just going to be a pretty straightforward monthly wrap up for March. I have talked about a lot of these books already in like Future Fridays or rereads, so I'll try and speed through those, but to kind of give a lay of the land for the month. I read 13 books this month, according to my story graph, which is an increase from last year, which I mentioned mostly because I was like, oh, cool. I can feel things picking up at work a little bit, which we'll see how that goes in terms of what it allows for reading time. So hopefully I'll still be able to keep at pace or better pace than last year, but you know, we'll see what happens. And the first book that I read for the month was The Upstairs House by Julia Fine. Just a weird book that is a wild ride and that's what I like. I will say it's been interesting because for some reason on my Facebook I've been getting these like, I don't know if they're ads or if people are sharing them, about a good night moon room experience in New York and I'm like, that's weird though <laughs> because I just read this book. So something to check out maybe, I don't know. And then I read The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This has been getting a lot of buzz, or at least where I hang out on the book internet, it seems to be talked up. This follows a millennial Shay. I say that because it seems to be something that the narrative focuses on a decent amount. <laughs> I don't really know why. I, I think it is interesting because her counterpart, Dominic, is younger than her. So that is an interesting dynamic that I don't read as much in romance and that is probably just based on what I'm picking up more than any um, commentary on the genre so let that be what that is but it felt like that that millennial status was established in relation to that more than anything and probably because you know millennials are adults now anyway so she works at the public radio and Dominic is like a hot young new reporter <laughs> that gets hired in and is getting a lot of attention and she's been kind of up producing forever. She's wanted to be on the air but it just hasn't happened and she has a lot of self-consciousness about her voice and how her voice sounds on the air and they go through a round of layoffs where she kind of saves her and this other guy's job by pitching this show called The X Talk where they pretend to be exes and that's the whole conceit of the show except they're not exes and Dominic is a reporter and so that ethical violation was something that he had to kind of get over like they had that was a convince and ask which was kind of uncomfortable for me and then later in the book at least there's at least one reference where Shay like I think more mentally but still like references that he even did that like was even able to overcome that when she pressured him to do it that may just made me a little uncomfortable i will say too because this whole book the whole premise is set up on a lie i was waiting for the house of cards to fall the whole time i as i talked about before get decently bad secondhand embarrassment and i just could feel it coming i don't feel like i had to worry about it as much as maybe i did I mean, the payoff, like, the, it, things happen, but I don't know where I was going with that. But as a reading experience, that was something that was in the back of my mind and just made it a little bit more tense. Okay, next I read First Comes Like, which is the third and last, I think, in Alicia Rye's Modern Love series. So this follows a beauty YouTuber, although I don't know if they ever say YouTube. Regardless, we know. And a popular Bollywood star who's transferring to Hollywood and their interactions that start from a kind of catfishing scenario. It was a lot of fun. I will say that the end felt like it crammed in a whole lot and I would have liked to see it kind of space out a little bit and really dig deeper into what was going on there. But I mean, I had fun. So what can you do? And then I read The Conductors by Nicole Glover, which I've talked about as well. I still just really enjoyed the community and characters that were established in this book. And I am excited for the second one that comes out this fall. Again, if you're going in for the mystery, I don't know how satisfied you'll be as a reader, but I really, really enjoyed it. And then Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is just still a joy. If you need a laugh from your romance novel, this is 100% the place to go. And it is still very sexy. I just 
love this series. It is such a joy. I was very excited to see it hit bestsellers. It's just really, really stellar. So definitely check that one out if you have not already. And then I did my Shadow and Bone trilogy reread. Again, I have the third one on ebook. So I just repurchased, not repurchased. I'd never purchased them in the first place. I purchased the first two to do my reread because I wanted to do them physically and I knew I wouldn't get a library copy probably in time. So I just need to do the rest of them as much for the show, but also because uh, I just picked up my copy of Rule of Wolves today. So I need to finish kind of refreshing myself before I really can appreciate how we wrap everything up there. And then I read The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornacek, which I talked about more in depth in my Future Friday video on it. And it is a reimagining or new lens entry into Norse mythology. So if you're looking for more mythology outside of the Greek, that is a great place to go. Okay, and then I read Muted by Tammy Charles. This is a young adult novel in verse that follows a young woman and to a certain extent her three friends that are in a singing group and they are wanting to get discovered by this big hit musician slash producer and present themselves at one of his concerts in his path and like start singing so that they can be discovered. And then they're inside that world and what is going on there. And it becomes more sinister. It is a heavy book. I think the poetry is a great way to explore that heaviness without having to sit in it too much, right? It is expressing those feelings in a really succinct way that is still very evocative without forcing us as readers to kind of have to go through it. I also think it makes the book more accessible to a wider variety of readers. That being said, I am not an expert on poetry, so I can't really speak to how the poetry works in the book other than that I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the read. I think it will appeal to a lot of readers. And then I got to the end. <laughs> And that's not like a, that changed my mind. It's like, I'm still kind of reeling from it. It went to a place I wasn't expecting and I'm still kind of processing it. I'm like, okay, do I like where it went? What, what does where it went mean for the story being told? Like there's a whole lot there. I think it was a very specific artistic choice. I think that there is a whole, a whole lot of conversation that can be had about that choice. I don't think it was a bad choice by any means, to be clear. It was just one that's like, it's got me thinking. So in that way, it's probably a good choice because I am just like, what? What? That didn't, okay, okay. So that's one to check out, I guess. And if you know, because I don't want to invite spoiler for that ending. So I will just have to deal with it, I guess, myself. I'll keep working on the processing part. We'll see where we get. Um, and then I listened to As Far As You'll Take Me by Phil Stamper, which is the oboe, oboe book, young adult oboe book. It does follow a young man who grew up gay in Kentucky, but was not out. And when he goes overseas for the summer, as he's presented to his parents for this project. Now keep in mind, he has graduated. So he is technically an adult. He plans to stay there, but he also isn't a part of the program that he's told his parents that he's in. Now he does have family overseas. So he's not just kind of wandering around London by himself. I will say it handled everything it was tackling in a very real, honest way. Both like the coming out storyline, our main character deals with anxiety, and it does also get into some eating, disordered eating stuff. So I will say though, if you struggle with any of those things or feel like they could be a trigger to you, that I think this book could potentially do that because it does it so honestly, there's a frantic energy to our main character and I felt myself getting anxious sometimes where I was like, why? Why are we spiraling in this way? 
So that is just that. I will say I, there was a little bit of a disconnect for me in terms of the age level because the, we were dealing with these really important, heavy things. Not that younger readers can't, for sure. But the tone felt a little younger, especially in how we were kind of presenting everything new about London as if we'd never, ever heard about the differences. Like, these are crisps, which sure, if you if you haven't read a whole lot or had exposure to a whole lot, that may be your first introduction. So maybe I'm just being a little bit too picky there, but it felt that discovery of and the way we discovered all of the like differences in culture felt a little younger in how it was explored. So that was just a tension I felt in the subject matter and the tone. I also quickly, I did really, really like how it explored friendships, both new friendships and the idea of found family, but also the idea of the fact that friendships can break up, toxic friendships, how to set boundaries and that it's okay to set boundaries within friendships. So that was a really compelling aspect of the book to me as well. And then I read A Tip for the Hangman, which I just talked about, which is Christopher Marlowe being a spy and doing spy things and then writing some plays in the background. It's a lot of fun. If you just want, you know, a historical espionage adventure, you're gonna get a historical espionage adventure. And sometimes you just gotta scratch that itch, you know? And then finally, I read Bridge of Souls by D.E. Schwab, which is the third in her middle grade series that follows Cassidy Blake. I don't know if there's like a series title for this one, but her parents are like paranormal investigators. Uh, one is a believer, one's not kind of show concept, which I would think I would like to see. And each book kind of goes to a different city. This book we are in New Orleans and yeah it follows her and her ghost friend Jacob as they kind of encounter spirits and deal with both the spirits in these different places but also how that impacts them because Cassidy almost died so she is kind of able to go back and forth between the spirit realm because of this but Jacob is definitely he definitely died so threatening of both Cassidy still being alive and Jacob's existence with Cassidy. So they're a good, it's a good series. I honestly didn't know that this one was out. It came out recently until I saw it on Litzy. I think historically th those books have come out in the fall. I would assume that if it had been planned or was in the works that it got pushed back for the Addie LaRue release. Although the audiences aren't the same. I mean, they're the same in that I am still reading these books, but this is a series for children. And I will say I like this ghost story for children because it feels like it's got a little bit of spooky. I feel like I don't have a really good sense of the spooky for kids because I was afraid of everything. And I, I was afraid to pick certain things up. Like I didn't touch any Goosebumps books, but I did like books with ghosts. So it was just like a balance. And I think this does strike that balance of, of that tension, but not being too, too scary. But also I think kids like that because it's that kind of grappling with mortality and death as you reach that age and realize that that is a thing. So anyway, that's a long way of saying it's for children. I don't know because I don't have many children of that age in my life if it is you know a hit with that age range I don't know how often it's getting checked out at the school library but I enjoy them so hopefully the actual people they're in town do too okay I tried to speed through this a little bit more this month mostly because I've talked about most of these books before but it was a good month I, I read some good stuff so what did you read this month that you really enjoyed and yeah, I don't know. I won't keep you here a prisoner to my babble anymore, but read something good and yeah, bye.